Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Well World TV show. And today's episode is all about self love and the importance and value in taking care and really focusing your energy on loving yourself. And before we get there, I just want to let you know that Well World TV is uber excited to launch our video influencer boot camp. So if you are a person who has dreamt about bringing your voice to a greater audience and up leveling and sharing your message and your passion and your enthusiasm, starting on June 23rd, we're launching a four week course called the Video Influencer Boot Camp. You can register or get more information at bootcamp.wellworld.tv. And we will be meeting every Tuesday and Thursday just for a bit of time and walk you through exactly how to do that. So we hope to see you there. I am uber excited as well to introduce our guest today. Leora Leone is coming in and she's joining us all the way from sunny California. Hi, Leora. How are you today? Hi, Deborah. Nice to see you. I'm doing great. Great. Well, share with our audience. I know that you uh, work in this realm of uh, shamanism and personal growth and development. Share with our audience a little bit about who you are and what your passion in the world is. Well, I, I am. I started out as a shaman and then I became a Reiki master and a channel. And I just started, you know, finding that healing people was what my dharma was. Um, I became a Brian Weiss certified past life regression therapist. And that opened my eyes to a whole nother world. But through it all, the, the biggest component was trying to teach people how to love themselves. And that has been my dharma, my passion in life on how I help other people is getting them to learn how to love themselves. And before we transition into what your dharma is, let's just talk about that a little bit, because I think it's important for people to conceptualize what it means to be so clear on your purpose, so clear on your passion, and having that sense of alignment. How, like, how did you know or what moment did you get to when you were like, OK, wow, I'm part of my contribution in this lifetime is to really help people understand the value of self-love? Right. And, you know, the most important thing about self-love is not only loving the way you look in the mirror, but loving everything about you, staying in that vibration. Dharma um, is located actually in your throat chakra and it's speaking your truth. But Dharma is about doing something that you love. And you know, when you do something you love, you find all this passion and you just feel it's almost like you're having a love affair with your artwork or your music or whatever it is that you're creating. But then, turning that passion into something that helps the world. That is your true purpose in this life is to, to be here following your passion and helping everybody else follow theirs. That's Dharma. And, and for your personal journey, and uh, I'm sure you'll share with everybody a little bit of your history. It's not always something you're just born to. And all of a sudden, wow, I know exactly why I'm here and what I'm supposed to do. And oftentimes it takes challenge for us to get that level of clarity. How yeah. has that been for you? You know, unfortunately, humans have to learn through struggle. You know, that's part of our evolutionary process of having difficulties or what I like to call them lessons and learning how to grow through that lesson and understand it. That's the way we grow. And in my life, certainly, I've had my fill. I usually don't talk about all of that. I used to tell people all the struggles I went through. And, um, you know, I had childhood abuse. I had rape. I had sexual molestation. I was losing a kidney, having stage three breast cancer, then having a son with severe autism who was uh, vaccine injured, and then he died three months ago. So by the time that my son's death came, I was in, and not to make it seem, you know, easy, because today I was bawling my eyes out again, but I understand now I know when these trials and tribulations come to me, I know that it is a part of me that is growing and expanding. And so when my son died, yes, it was the most devastating thing. He was my soulmate. 
But what I learned from it was not only, you know, what a beautiful place that he's going to or where he is, that he's with me now more than he was and that he has helped me grow and helped me understand how to get through that more, how to understand grief. So now with my students, I can help them grow. I can help them understand that no matter what obstacle comes to you in your life, you have the capabilities to turn it around and grow. And if you're, if you're working with somebody else, and they're struggling a little bit with, you know, I don't feel like I have a sense of purpose. I don't know what my contribution is. How do I, how do I experience that sense of alignment that you have? What are some ideas that you would share with them so they can get, you know, move in that direction? Well, the first thing I say to my clients when they say, I don't know what my passion is. And I'll say, okay, so tomorrow you won the lotto, $50 million. Tell me what you would do to make yourself happy, right? And and what would you do? Not just, you know, buy the car, buy the house, you know, do all that. What would you do that would, what is your passion? And man, as soon as you give them that, you know, free freedom of not having to worry about money, their passion comes up like that. Hmm. You know, that's and cool. that's the thing. If you're following your passion, all the doors open for you. So you know when you're on the right track. You know, it, it just, it, that's the way it happens. So yeah, without the worries and the constraints of money and all of that, you automatically know where you're going or where you want to go. Exactly. How you want to put your time and energy. And, you know, when I reflect back on, you know, my history, there definitely were those key moments, especially in hindsight. Maybe you don't see it in the chaos of the moment, but in right. hindsight, I was definitely on a driven path. It's putting me exactly where I am today. So every circumstance, whether it was face planning in the doctor's office or producing my very first TV show or, you know, going up and, and pitching a concept to a network and then, you know, being able to do it, things I was, I, I like literally can look right now and say, boom, 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 boom. I know who I am now. I'm a little more, we'll call it seasoned. You know, <laughs> in your fifties, you start to get seasoned. I like that. <laughs> uh, and it, my gaze has never been more elevated. And once right. you have that level of clarity, it, it, you can't even quit. You know, <laughs> you try to quit and you can't because like you said, circumstances come in to support your elevation and moving in that direction. And that's, that's what I feels like, feels like happens to me all the time. Yeah, you're a tapestry. We all are tapestries in our own right that are not finished. When we die, they're finished. But all of those things, as I tell my 26-year-old daughter, who after high school, she didn't know where she was going. And then through college, she picked a major that she didn't really like. And then now she's getting her master's in teaching. And she's finally found what she loves. And having a brother who was severely autistic She's dealing now with wanting to be with those kids like that. You know, she's so everything that you did in your life led you up to here. There's even more that's going to come up and you're like, wow, I didn't realize that that was going to help me get where you are. And where you are right now is you are following your Dharma. You're putting together this whole program of reaching out to the world with health and wellness. And now you're going into the whole woo woo area and, and, <laughs> And, and you may not even feel comfortable at some times, but that is your divine purpose. That's what you came here to do. And back when you were a teenager, you know, in high school, having fun, you had no idea you were going to be where you are now. And when you're on that path, sometimes it's a little scary. You're like, am I supposed to do this? Am I supposed to go here? And this might be a problem. And, and all you've got to do is just stay with your passion. And your passion is helping everyone else right so you just have to trust that and follow it yes which brings us to one of your main platforms and concepts which i love to talk about because it's so it's so valuable and important for people especially the caretaking types to really understand self love and how self love can transform yourself and you know one of your platforms is you know love yourself change your life and you know, some people might struggle with that whole, you know, love myself is selfish, it's self-centered, it's right. vain. Uh, how do you how do you work with people with this concept? 
Yeah, you know, initially self-love, people look at it like, you know, vanity, thinking that you're all that and you look in the mirror and you look gorgeous. And that's a little tiny part. Self-love is about loving everything exactly who you are, being able to um, not worry about what friends think or setting boundaries. When you take care of yourself first every morning, your vibration just ripples out, especially if you're a mom or you're a wife or you're working and you're the boss. How you present yourself every day is exactly how much you love yourself. And if you start out your day taking care of your physical, your mental, and your spiritual, and spiritual I always refer to meditating because it's vitally important to connect to where we all come from, the divine, the God, the all that is, whatever you want to call it, the God of your choice, connecting every day so that you can quiet your mind and you can shut down all those tabs, you can organize your thoughts, and you connect to your source so you're recharging your battery. And then on a mental note, then you do all of these things that uplift you, you know, watching uh, Gaia or reading books that are self-improvement books and physical, taking care of your body through exercise, through eating right. When you do all of that and you stay in that vibration of love, because when love is about who you really are, when you stay in that vibration, it just ripples out into everybody else. When you also are in the vibration of love, everything comes to you because you're in your true form. So you can manifest like crazy. And you may find now that things are coming to you that you never thought would because you're in that vibration of love. And that's what self-love is. It's not about looking in the mirror. And that's a tiny part of it. But you want to constantly be in that state of the divine, who you really are outside of this body. And that is pure love. That is bringing love to you. And everything that you think about, you talk about, and you your actions, they are all based on something that's going to come back to you. So if you stay in this positive love mode, nothing but love will come to you. The minute that you change your thoughts to negative, negative comes. You create your reality. So you want to stay in pure love, your divine self. Yes. And I had I had some moments of clarity over the last, I would say five, five years or so around this this topic, which when I knew this was going to be our topic, I got really excited because I, I think people need to understand that, yes, it is okay to give. Like a lot of us give to our parents, our children, our careers, our coworkers. And so our energy goes outward as we think we're doing good in the world. Like I'm helping that person. I'm helping this person. I'm, I'm supporting them. I'm doing their job for them. You know, all of this outward energy. And it is beneficial. But if it's coming at the expense of self-focus and self-love and self-development, you're giving too much. And so I had this level of clarity that when all of us, all of us as humans could almost rescind that energy and put it into ourselves first and become completely accepting of who we are, find our path, do our passion, stay on our mission that we can exponentially help those in our circle even more so because now they're looking at the embodiment of somebody who understands that it has to start with self-love and it's not that you take away from doing all those things it just comes from a different place and and that was so clear to me and it doesn't mean you know, it's not necessarily physical things like you're saying. It's not, oh, getting your nails done is selfish. Getting your hairs done, going to have a professional do your makeup is selfish. It's whatever those things are that make you feel whole and complete and you accept yourself. That's when you're able to give more freely to the world and, and be able to transform their lives even in a bigger way than the tactical, you know, hey, I'm right. taking your job. Why are you? Why are you acting like that? <laughs> right. And and it's an exchange of energy. And you can't give 
from an empty well because all it does is breed resentment and you're fatigued and you're not giving the best you. You know, I talked about having my son who was severely autistic. And when I first started meditating, you know, he smashed the door and wouldn't let me do it. And I had to flip out on him like several times to let him know that this is my time for me to honor my existence. And it got to the point where on days where I was stressed, he would lead me by the hand and take me to my bedroom and say, go close your eyes, mom, because that was his idea of meditation so that I would be a better me. Yeah. And, you know, giving and giving and giving when you're in that mode of just constantly giving it. And why do we do that? We do that because we're trying to fulfill this emptiness inside of us. We think that giving is going to get. But it's not true. That hole inside that is filled by so many different things, by food, alcohol, drugs, sex, all of these things, people try to fill that hole when you are the only one that can fill that hole. And a lot of times giving and giving and giving is trying to fill that hole. So when your hole is complete, yeah, you help people out. I have a 93 year old friend who I take, you know, food to every week. And that past week, I wasn't feeling good. And I had to say, I can't do it. I don't feel good. And I felt a little bit bad, but I knew I had to take care of myself. And there's another component to this is changing all the people around you. When you, you, you can't change anybody. You can't change your husband. You can't change your friends. You can't change the people that work for you. But what you can do is raise your vibration. Stay in that thing of love. Stay in that vibration of love where you are feeling your natural source. And what that does, again, is it ripples out to everybody. With my husband, I couldn't change him. All I could do was change myself. And then everything else changed. So when you change yourself, it changes your world. It changes your environment. Absolutely. And when you were talking, I had a I had a flashback to a moment when this really solidified for me. And I was I was working with a, a client. I was in California in a hotel, and we I was with my business partner. He was also my personal partner at the time. And I remember we had a phone call together. And something happened happened during the course of that phone call where I felt, oh my gosh, I have given so much of myself to this other person. And I gave and gave and gave because that's who I am. And yet now I'm feeling so disappointed. And I remember, I remember the thought I had in the moment was, when is my Deborah going to show up? And, and in that second, everything shifted. And I, I think he thought I was having a mental breakdown because at first <laughs> I was so bad and I was so angry and upset. And then I, I remember I went in to take a shower and I was like, that's what I was. I was thinking, when is my Deborah going to show up? And it was almost as if a voice said, she's right here and you're not showing up for yourself. And I started laughing like a hyena <laughs> in the shower. Because all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, okay, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I'm not showing up and loving right. myself first. And, and everything, you know, it yeah. has perfect sense, but everything shifted in that moment. And I told him I wasn't nuts. I just had a little spiritual breakthrough. <laughs> yeah, an epiphany. And, you know, when you're talking about that, it makes me think what I tell my students is you have to love that inner child, that little girl or that little boy that is inside of you. And when you're going on a new venture or when you're going through a, a personal evolution, if it's just like a child beginning to walk. When a child begins to walk, it'll get up and take one step. And we're like, yay, good job. And the kids looking around like, wow, I'm going to do that again. Yeah. But if we do that, if we fall, what do we do? We down ourselves. We're like, oh, you're horrible. You're stupid. So we have to take that away and allow ourselves to make mistakes, allow ourselves to follow the path and maybe not going in the right path. We have to constantly be our own cheerleader. And how would we treat a child? 
every time that you put yourself down, you have to think about that. How would I treat this little Deborah? Or how would I treat this little Leora? Would I shame her and make her feel bad because she made a mistake? No, I would cheer her on. And that's what we have to be as our own cheerleader. You know, mm -hmm. that's self-love. Yes. And there's definitely, you know, because I kind of have a little bit of fun with this. And even, even this morning, I was kind of rehearsing in my head a presentation I was getting ready for. And I was reflecting back on some pivotal, pivotal moments that really shifted my life. And one of those was, you know, I was 21 years old. I was a senior in college. Um, I, I've always been career driven. Like when I was a little girl, I didn't dream about growing up and getting married and wearing a beautiful gown and having children. I dreamed to wear, you know, and this was the eighties. I had on one of those business suits and I had a briefcase and I was, I had a career. That's yeah. what I wanted. Yeah. Um, and so when I was a senior in college, I had been seeing somebody since my sophomore year and literally six weeks before I graduated, uh, I took a test and my score was surprise, you're pregnant. <laughs> and, and then, Second, you know, the whole trajectory of my plan shifted and I, I went into fear and I started making decisions based on fear. And one of those was the person that I was in a relationship. We were actually at the end of our relationship. But because of that circumstance, he proposed. I said, yes, took me nine seconds to make that decision and nine years to undo it. <laughs> so, so now. I actually think about her like I almost think about her in that moment. And I have such a sense of compassion and love for where she was at in that moment. And it's not that we're separate people, but kind of like what you were saying, you know, if you can reflect back on certain times in your life and and give mm -hmm. that part of yourself the love and encouragement that maybe it she didn't have in the moment because I didn't, you know, my, I was kind of estranged from my parents. I was in fear. I knew I was probably making the wrong decision, but I didn't know how to be a single mom. And, you know, I envelop her now in, you know, love and support that maybe she didn't have in that moment. And I think that's healing on some level. That's so healing because not only when, when you start to love yourself, you heal who you were. You know, you heal that energy and you embrace that energy because all of that energy, that's who you are today. You know, you embracing that, that's so healing and that's so powerful. I always tell people that you have to love your last mistake that you think was your last mistake because it wasn't. It was just another path in your tapestry that created exactly who you are. I think that's brilliant, you know. <laughs> You have to accept what you feel was a failure because it never was. There is no, there is no failure. It's all perfect. Everything is perfect, you know, in your life, in your divine path. It's the way it's supposed to go. Because mm -hmm. I, I almost feel, you know, interacting with myself, you know, my own experience, but interacting with other people is a lot of times there's definitely like blips in our past that have that potential to keep us from growing, keep us from evolving because we haven't made peace with whatever the circumstances of that moment were. So if, right. it, if, if when we were a small child and, you know, we didn't get unconditional love from our parents, there's a wound that's delivered there, you know, and we, if we, if we don't do this work, like we're talking about, it will impact and kind of clutter your current day. And then same thing, like, you know, this happened, you know, this happened that was uh, in a sexual nature that was inappropriate. And this happened from a boss, you know, and so we hold on to those moments when most likely we viewed ourselves as a victim. And maybe we were waiting for somebody to come and comfort us that right. never manifested in the right way. And then our job as adults is to go back to those moments as best as you're able and provide the comfort to that part of yourself that felt victimized or traumatized and couldn't figure out how to move forward in the right way. And so that's, that's kind of deep, 
<laughs> yeah, no, and and you're absolutely right. We we have filters that we look through every single day. So you have the girl that was sexually victimized, and then you have the girl that wasn't. And how do they view their life? And how do they choose a husband? And how do they navigate through the life with that energy? So mm -hmm. when you can go back and heal that energy, that energy evaporates. And we carry energy with us from, you know, if you don't believe in past lives, just from the point that we were even in utero, how mm -hmm. our parents were feeling. I do past life regressions and a lot of people, they'll go back into utero and their mother was crying or anxious or whatever. And it's so healthy for them to understand that it wasn't them as a little infant it was that their mother was stressed about you know the impending birth because they didn't have a financial situation that was great or that the husband and the the mother and father were fighting that in utero the baby thinks that that's their fault they feel that energy that's all they can do is feel that energy so that's what i love about past life regression because it helps you release that energy that is subconscious even to a point where you're not even knowing it. Mm -hmm. So that's a really great healing method. But yeah, we all look through filters, filters of fear of, of, of being abandoned, of not being loved, you know, of being all these different things. And so little by little, we have to eliminate those fears so that we can express who we are in our divine self like who we really are and that's the state of love yes i love that and what are your so what are your thoughts on really helping people get past those moments those wounds from their past because you know i feel like i sometimes am helped with that mm -hmm. i'm sure in your coaching practice maybe you run across people that it's a little more challenging or, do, you know, do you have like directions on how you help people move there and say, okay, these things happened to you in your past and right. then here's the way to start working with that. So the first thing that I really work on when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with a client is we talk about reshaping the brain and how um, these filters, these um, incidents from our, our life or from our past life create this filter and this energy. And in the brain, the brain is like a computer. So the brain, like say, for example, you think you're ugly. You were told you were ugly as a child. And I would first tell them, to start looking in the mirror and start doing affirmations. And if you can't say, I am beautiful, I want you to say, I am a child of God, therefore I am beautiful. And then what I want you to do, I want you to go a step further. And every time that you have a negative thought in your head, I want you to do something that's very simple, everybody can do it. And the minute like you could look in the mirror and say, I'm ugly. And you put up a stop sign and you say, stop. I am a child of God, therefore I am beautiful. So the stop sign exercise that starts to change neuroplasticity. So neuroplasticity in your brain, your brain's like a computer, so you're given input and you have a neuron here and a neuron here. And so when the thought comes in, this triggers to this. And through neuroplasticity, the bridge starts like, I'm fat, I'm fat, I'm fat, I'm fat, I'm fat, I'm fat, till it becomes a bridge. So immediately when we look in the mirror, we go, I'm fat, because that bridge is there. So what I right. teach is to we're going to create new bridges, new neuroplasticity bridges. I am a child of God, therefore I am beautiful. Then to I am beautiful. I am beautiful. So that you start to reverse, you're reprogramming the brain. So that's just the brain part of it. And then into the spiritual part, when you're meditating, you are healing your body. There's just no, there's so much scientific evidence to back that up, but you are healing. You are connecting to where you are from, the source of who you really are. And then physically, we work on something little, like what do you want to start doing for your body? Let's just start drinking eight glasses of water a day and set those goals. So your goals are you're going to do something physically, mentally, and spiritually, and you're going to change your actions, your words, and your thoughts, because all of that carries vibration. And it's a lasting vibration. 
So when you say something negative about yourself, your brain doesn't know if you're joking. That's why I always hesitate when I try to teach a class about this because I'm thinking, is my brain thinking that I think I'm fat right now? And <laughs> so you have to be careful about your input of information and constantly be aware. Thinking your thought process is the most difficult, trying to erase those thoughts. But those are the tools that I give my clients so that they can start to make the changes. And then also create tiny little goals, journal every night. And if you didn't do what you were supposed to do, give yourself a break. It's back to those baby steps of being a baby, taking little steps. And then tomorrow, I'm going to try again to be the best person that I can be. And it's always being that are you the best person that you can be? Have you given the most that you can give? You know, in every situation, did you do the best that you could? And as long as you maintain that standard, yes, for that time period, I did the best that I could do. Right. And that's so true what you're saying about the kind of well routed paths in your brain, because I know for a fact I still have thoughts that I thought 10 years ago, that I thought 20 years ago. And part of me being where I'm at today is like, why am I still having that thought process? Like I, I would think I would have evolved above that, you know, that looking in the mirror and thinking you're not acceptable in some way. And I like what you said about, you know, repaving that into a new pathway subtly and gently, and then, you know, calling a stop to that voice and becoming right. conscious of it. Because you haven't done the work, you haven't done the work, and it takes yeah. work to change. You know, you have to do the work to just like when you reprogram your computer, it takes yep. a small bit of work. You have to do that work. You can't. It's not like this society that we're in is taking a pill that makes everything all right. Well, it doesn't. Right. You've got yeah. to do the work. And so that little voice inside of your head, and I still hear those voices, you know, like, oh, my God, an age is not your, you know, companion. <laughs> well, it is your companion when you're a woman. You know, it's your constant companion. But you have to get over that. When I lost my breast, I had, to have my, I had cancer, and then I had these breast implants put on. And I thought, I can do this because they were making me sick. So I had the breast removed. And the first time I put on a shirt, I broke down and I'm like, oh, my God. And here I had just found the love of my femininity and who I was. And then, you know, they're like, OK, <laughs> you're not done. We're going to take you to a whole new level. <laughs> yeah, right? And you're in this whole new level going, OK, all right. I just and, and then how do you handle it? Nothing ever stops. You never stop learning. It's always a lesson. But what happens is the lessons become easier. And you learn how to step back and say, okay, what is this? What lesson am I supposed to be learning? And then you go, okay, this is the lesson. Thank you, universe. Can you expedite it for me a little bit? But I'm going to just go back to the basics, meditating and, and training my brain and understanding that this too shall pass. Hmm. Yes. Well, for the record, your light is so bright and, and everything that comes through you is always going to overshadow anything that you look like, even if you're in the Aww. middle of it pandemic and I haven't had my hair done and <laughs> all of those beautiful. <laughs> but it has been a total delight to spend a little bit of time with Leora and share you with people. How do you work with people? And I'm going to show them your website. So if it, somebody is interested in connecting with Leora and working with her directly, uh, please share what how you work with people. And yeah, and now everything is virtual, but you can go to my website and you can, you know, plug in my calendar, uh, what you would like to do, um, whether it be a past life regression, um, down to life coaching or whatever it is, even a 15 minute consultation, uh, go to my website and then you can click into my calendar, uh, calendar and it'll set you up with an appointment. So perfect. And I'll, I'll just let everybody know that I did do a session with Lior and it was amazing. So she immediately took me back into my past and we uh, walked in that, in that, in those shoes for a little while. So definitely I would encourage you to reach out, work with her and let her share her love with you. So thank you, Lior, for joining us. And thank you, Deborah. You are welcome and we'll see you soon.